Hi, and welcome to the fourth video in our Proxmox series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Kimu guest agent, um, and we're going to install that on our Ubuntu box and our Windows server box. We're going to be doing the two uh, virtual machines that we've already configured on our Proxmox server. Now, the Ubuntu, if you are using a nether Linux distro like Red Hat, um, or Fedora or anything like that, the steps will be the exact same. The only thing that will change will be would be your apt command for like a yum command, uh, for example, in Red Hat. Um, so you would just follow your typical distribution to get um, the application and to get the updates. Now, the main feature of the Kimu guest agent that I really like, I'm going to go over a few other ones as well but it's when you go to the summary page, you're gonna notice that you can actually see the IP address and the MAC address of the machine, which is, it's very helpful because it prevents you from having to log into the computer or the machine through the console and then typing IP address or IP config um, on Windows and just trying to find what your IP address is so you can remote into it. Because um, if we actually go into the two virtual machines that we're gonna be doing today, we are going to see that beside the IP is we get guest agent not running. So we're actually going to make these two virtual machines show us what the IP address right on the summary page. Some of the other big features of the Kimu guest agent is when you go to use these shutdown or reboot commands up here, you will be interacting much more gently with the machine instead of using the ACPI commands. Um, some of the other things are more related to Windows, but when you're going to take a snapshot on Windows, it will actually have a VSS service, which will help capture that current RAM and will just make it more consistent. Um, now, if you don't have the Kimu guest agent, the snapshots will still work. Um, this just makes them a little bit more reliable and a little bit more consistent. Um, the other main feature as well is if you go to pause or um, resume a virtual machine, it will actually sync with the Kimu guest agent, just making that a little, again, a little bit nicer. Um, so it just adds a little bit more of like quality of life uh, to your virtual machines. So let's actually go ahead and let's start with the Ubuntu box here. So we're going to be doing everything through the console, but you can definitely SSH into your Ubuntu boxes because we've configured SSH. If you've also configured RDP or PowerShell remoting, feel free to also use that on the Windows server. Um, but for now, we are going to be doing the GUI install on Windows. Uh, so just be aware of that potential difference. So we are first going to log into our Ubuntu server here. So I'm just going to put in my username and my password and we are gonna be loaded in. So the first thing that I actually like to do here is make sure that my system is completely up to date. So I'm gonna be doing a sudo apt upgrade or update, sorry, update. And then what I like to do is just do a double and sudo apt upgrade and then do a dash y. And I think that that is all spelled correctly. Now the dash y isn't necessary, but it'll just prevent Ubuntu from prompting you, are you sure you want to do this? We are just saying yes right away. So there it is. It's just doing the update. This can take a little bit of time depending on how behind your system is. But the nice thing about Linux distributions is that the updates are usually fairly quickly. I'm not even going to pause this because I know that it's probably only going to take a minute or two, uh, which is the nice feature. Now, a lot of times you don't necessarily really have to reboot um, your Ubuntu box when you do updates, um, but it will tell you if you should update, um, reboot or not after the update. And we're going to be seeing that just shortly here. I believe that after this update, it will actually tell me that I should reboot. So I'm just going to reboot anyways, um, but we're just going to let this finish up real quick. And then we can actually proceed with the actual Kimu agent install. But like I said, I like to always do this um, before installing the Kimu agent just to make sure that everything is nice and up to date. Uh, so we're just going to wait for that here. And it's already at 84%. It's almost done. Um, like I said, these usually don't take too, too long. And then we're actually going to see 
the output here of where it's actually going to say to um, reboot if needed. So it's almost done here. It's just at 95%. And it's almost done here. It's just doing the last couple little steps. And all right, so it is all done here. So we can actually see uh, restarting the system to load the new kernel will not be handled automatically. You should, so you should consider rebooting. So right there, it is telling us that we should be consider rebooting for that new kernel. So all we're going to do here is we are going to type in the command reboot, and that will go ahead and reboot our system. Again, the nice thing about uh, the Linux distributions, Ubuntu, or any of the other ones, is that their reboots are fairly quickly. I mean, even Windows reboots are pretty quick on virtual machines, uh, but it's definitely a lot quicker here. So let's go, let's type in our username, Jack. Let's type in our password. And I definitely messed that up here. Hopefully that worked uh, and it did not. Let me just type that back in here. All right, so we are in. So now the next thing we need to do is actually install that Kimu agent. So we are gonna type in sudo apt for apt install kimu dash guest dash agent. And again, we're just gonna do the space dash y at the end. Again, just to bypass that um, command of putting y for yes. And we're going to type in our password and it's going to install the Kimu agent. Now there are two different ways that we can actually do this is we can either start uh, the service now, because if we go into our summary here, we will actually notice that it will say guest agent not running, but we just installed the agent. Um, but by default, it does not actually start the service. So there are two ways that we can actually go about it. We can start uh, the agent itself and then say it, set it to auto start, or we can actually just reboot the machine. Now, since this is actually not a production box, we can actually just go ahead and reboot the machine. But if you did not want to reboot the machine, all you'd have to do is type in system ctl all together start emu dash guest dash agent and then it's just going to prompt us for our password here and there it is so it is authenticated and we should see our ip address there it is now and we can actually confirm that the 192.168.50.101 is the correct IP address just by going back to our console here. And we can type in IP space address. And we get the IP address of 192.168.50.101. And then again, if you want to make sure that that service auto starts, it would just be system CTL enable emu dash guest dash agent and run that and once again it's going to prompt you for your password we're just going to put that in there and there it is um oh, and i actually i think i did not type that in properly oh it is actually just prompting me for multiple because it is changing a couple different steps here there it is. So it is all done. So now if we actually just reboot, we can actually still see that the guest agent will still be running. So you can see guest agent is not running right now because the system is technically still rebooting. It is up now. We go back, we can now see the IP address is back up there. So it is all configured on our Ubuntu server. So we are good to go onto the Windows server. So let's go to our Windows virtual machine here and let's go. We're going to want to make sure actually of one thing before we go 
you're going to want to check out your hardware or you're going to want to make sure that you have your vert io drivers still loaded into the cd drive um, because you will actually need this for the Kimu agent install um, so let's actually just go into the console once again and we are already in our server if you're prompted with the login screen just go ahead and click this little keyboard launch the control alt delete and then type in your password and that's going to sign you in so we're going to have to do one thing before we can install the Kimu guest agent what you're going to want to do is open up your device manager and then you're going to notice in other devices you're going to have this pci simple communications controller and there's going to be a little triangle here what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on that and hit update driver and then you are going to want to browse my computer for drivers you're going to want to hit browse go into your vert io cd drive go down to vo serial select your version since this is server 2025 we're going to select 2k25 and this is an amd64 so we are going to select that and we are just going to hit next here and what that's going to do it's going to say windows has successfully updated your drivers windows has finished installing this driver and it's going to be the vert io serial driver so we're going to hit close and you're going to notice that we now have the vert io serial driver here so that is perfect and then what we can actually just go ahead and do is we can open up a windows explorer here go into this pc go into the vert io cd drive again and we are going to go ahead and find the folder called guest agent and because this is a 64-bit machine, we're going to install the Kimu guest agent x86 underscore 64. If you have a 32-bit OS that you are working with, you would install the Kimu guest agent i386. And we're going to just double click on that. It goes really, really quickly. We don't really have to worry too, too much about that. And actually, if we just go straight into the summary, we are going to see that we already see the IP address and the MAC address. Now, a fair warning, if you just install the guest agent and you don't do that first step in the device manager, you will not see the IP address. It will say guest agent is not running, regardless if you check the services. Now, let's say you do all the steps and it's still saying guest agent is not running. What you can do is you can come into the services here and you would look for the Kimu service. So here, if we actually scroll down, we can see that we actually get the Kimu guest agent and we can see that it is running here. Now, of course, because we are the Jack Programmer channel, you can, of course, always run a PowerShell here. So let's open up our PowerShell window and we would be able to do a get service, uh, Kimu dash ga for guest agent and if we do a get service on that we can actually see that it is running so that is fantastic if it says stop you would just want to go ahead and start that and then you should see in your summary page once again the ip address and we can always of course confirm that the 192.168.50.117 is the correct address by just coming in here typing ip config and we can actually see that our ip address is 192.168.50.117 so it, it is showing up correctly and again that is how you install the kimu guest agent on ubuntu or really any linux uh, distribution and Windows Server. Now you can install that on any Windows machine. Again, you would just have to select the proper um, version of the guest agent, depending on what 32-bit uh, or 64-bit OS you have, and as well as the driver for the Vert IO serial driver. Just make sure that you're selecting the right version of the driver, and everything should be good. Now, in the next video, we're actually going to be taking a look at Cloud Init with our Ubuntu servers. This will actually let you 
make a template of a server and quickly be able to bring up more virtual machines with custom users, custom IP addresses, very easily with the cloud in it. So we're gonna be taking a look at that next week. Be sure to tune in for that. If there's anything else that you guys would like to see specifically on here, please let me know in the comment section down below. I will also be pasting all the commands that we did today in the description, especially for the Ubuntu box, because there are no commands for the Windows server that we really ran other than the get service. I will post all of those in the description. Um, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.